Hello and welcome to Vince Loop Academy. In this video we're going to look at Wireshark and some basics about using the Wireshark application. So first of all you need to download Wireshark on your local machine. So you can head over to wireshark.org and simply just click download and then install the version that fits your operation system. And once installed you need to open it and then I will see you there. So once you have installed Wireshark and opened the application you will see a window similar to this and here you can see the different networks connected to your machine so for my part you can see there is a lot of traffic on the Ethernet 2 because I'm sitting on a desktop computer and I'm not having any wireless uh, network card attached to my PC so this is going through my Ethernet cable so if you are sitting on a laptop or you attach a wireless network card to your computer you'll be able to see wireless traffic as well and when you are having the right network card you can actually actually set it into monitor mode and once in monitor mode you can start to capture network traffic using Wireshark on the network that you're on so let's say you're for example on a, a local uh, network with multiple users using the same wireless network then you can actually see the packages coming in and to their computers. Of course, most of them will be encrypted, but if you're going to, for example, a Starbucks or something else where they have free public Wi-Fi, you'll be able to capture a lot of other people's traffic. And again, most of it will be encrypted, but there will most likely also be some unencrypted data. This, of course, is illegal just to capture uh, people's uh, packages and use it for malicious purpose but as a study case it can be very educational to see traffic from a lot of computers in order to understand what kind of network packages is going back and forth through a network but for now we'll just learn about the basics of the Wireshark so we will be selecting the network that I have traffic on the Ethernet 2 so you click here and as you see it automatically got into capturing mode so now it's capturing all the network traffic that is going through and from my computer and if I just click here it will stop and then this will be our uh, amount of packages that we just captured and if I want to capture more packages I can just click here again and start a new capturing process but for now let's look at these packages so now that we have captured some network traffic we can see an overview right here so we're able to see the time of when these were captured we can see the number of the packages we can see the source so what device IP were they coming from the destination what IP uh, is they trying to reach their protocol some length of the package and additional info so if you're unfamiliar with networking in general such as IPs different protocols um, I recommend that you watch my network basic series which I will have a link to in the top right corner but for now let's try to look at some filters so as you see here there is a <coughs> lot of packages being captured just during the time that we uh, had it running which were very, a very short amount of time so you will see that you are capturing a lot of network traffic because all your applications on the computer is running in the background sending information back and forth so just because you're not doing anything in your browser your computer is still communicating a lot with the wider internet or your router so and especially if you are uh, scanning a wireless network where you have your network card set to monitor mode you'll of course see all the traffic from all devices on that network which will add up a lot but you can do filtering on packages in Wireshark. So for example, if you're only interested in packages using the TCP protocol, you can just write TCP here and then you will only see TCP protocols. <coughs> you can do the same for, for example, UDP and you will only see these types of protocols. If you are interested in packages, for example, going to a certain website and you know that it will contain a different a certain word, you can, let's see, if we start capturing here I will try to navigate to YouTube and find uh, the package afterwards with the word YouTube containing so we will start capture here continue without saving then I will go into my browser into a new window type YouTube and if I then go back here and stop this capturing I can go up here and type TCP contains YouTube 
Then I'm filtering now on packages with the TCP protocol that contains the word YouTube. And here we found one package that is going to one of YouTube servers and this is using the TLS 1.3. This you can also learn more about in my network series where we're basically just saying hello as a client. And the reason why this package showed up is because if we look at this additional info here, we see that the URL YouTube is present. So let's say that I want to find all the packages that my device sent to this particular IP. So I will see if there are more packages that are not containing the word YouTube, which were the filter that we used on this IP. So instead I can type IP dot address, let's see, address here. And let's see, it's 17. So by typing IP dot address, double equals and the IP here, let's try to hit enter. And as you see, there is a lot of packages going back and forth, my device and the YouTube server. So here we see the package where the IP is as destination, but it is also sending packages back to my computer because when I'm hitting a URL, I'm just saying to a server, I need the information that you have here. And then it is sending it back to my IP. That is why we see that here it is the source, the server and my computer IP is the destination of the package. So here we can see a lot, but let's try to go into one of these right here. And as you see, there is a lot of garbage data in this, but you can also, for example, here, transmission, here you can see the port that were used. Normally all web traffic is going on the port 443 and you can see some of the size of the packages and also if you are interested in the timestamp how long it took uh, to make make the communication so now let's try to see if we can find some traffic that is unencrypted meaning that we are able to read the data being sent because it is not using standard encryption uh, over the internet so to illustrate how we can capture uh, unencrypted data. I have navigated to this on Chikura site here. There is no encryption, no HTTPS on this. This means that the data that is being transferred from my browser to the server is unencrypted and anyone listening in on these pages can actually view the username and password. So let's try to test this. So we head up to Wireshark. We make a new capture. Then I enter the admin 123, admin 123, and click enter. And then it will see that our user doesn't exist, exist, but for this case, it's no problem. So now that we have entered this, we will try to search for TCP that contains the username that we entered. I think that we can actually, let's just try to search for username instead of the actual username just to illustrate that people that is listening in can just find that data. So we find one package and let's see here. Mm, username, server, Microsoft. Sorry about that username, we're not. So let's see what it does if we do like so. Oh, let's see what it came under. So here we have the post request, and since this is unencrypted, we can see here, ah, yeah, so it actually sent it under text user name with a space, and that is why our search didn't find it, and the password is admin and 123. So here we can see that if anyone were listening in on this, for example, if I was on a wireless device, and I tried to log in on a non secure site, they were actually able to see my information, and this is the same for credit card information, and all kind of um, information that you put on a site that is unsecure. So be aware of this when you're using uh, and browsing online. So as you have seen through these small examples, this is only the very basics of Wireshack. It is capable of a lot more. You are capable of making statistics and all kind of advanced packages and filtering. But I recommend that if you are interested in Wireshark in general, that you navigate to the site and see the user guide to learn more about the more advanced stuff that you can do. But now you have uh, been 
introduced to the basics that enable you to do some network analysis either on your own machine or on your own local network just to get an idea of what kind of packages is actually being transferred from and to your device which can be very beneficial <clears throat> not only to investigate possible network problems but also also to see if there are some applications running in the background that is actually sending out and communicating with some malicious servers uh, out on the internet so i hope that you enjoyed the video and then remember to give a like and subscribe and then i will see you next time here on winslow academy